Hey, my friends, how's it going? Israel Galindo here from Advanced Networks. I hope you guys are doing great out there. Today, we wanted to kind of bring you into the world of DNS, what it means, what it does, how it works for your system, and how you can utilize things like Google's DNS um, in regards to your internet provider. But we're going to talk about that. So let's first talk about the topic. The topic today of DNS, what does it mean? Well, DNS is your domain name system. In short, it's the phone book of the internet. And all that really means is every device in the universe has an IP address, numbers. The computers always talk by numbers, right? So what we're trying to do is create a phone book or have a phone book out there that translates it for you. Like when you go to a web page in Google, you type, I'm looking for golf clubs. You're not going, hey, I need a number that shows me what the website of golf clubs is this domain name server or DNS translates that for you. Now, each internet provider out there, whether you're with Spectrum or AT&T or Verizon, it doesn't matter. They all use these services to translate when you're searching the internet. Now, when you go to a web page and you open it up on a browser and you start typing what you're searching for, if it's slow, if it's truncated, if it doesn't go anywhere, if it says, I can't get to it right now, that's when your internet provider's having DNS issues because you're still able to access the browser. You just can't hit a page. Now, if everything is down, including your email and everything else, and most likely your internet provider is down, that's when you want to contact them. But if they are limited, degraded, et cetera, this is where your DNS is going to be an issue. Now, one of the biggest things about ISPs or internet service providers, their priority is not DNS. Our priority is to show you that they're up. That's really it. Google, on the other hand, would make that a priority because they are using this domain name system to show you searches. And this is what they do. Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, you know, anything out there is basically doing that. So because, again, the internet is governed and translated by that naming system, we're going to basically show you how you can add Google's DNS versus your ISP's DNS. And we'll give you the pros and cons to that in a minute, but I wanna kinda go through and show you how to add that into your system. So I'm going to open up a second window here in a second to show you guys. Let me share my screen. There it is. And I'm gonna show you guys basically how this is gonna be adding the 8888 into the system. And again, that's basically going to let you have a Google public search engine help your computer get to the internet. So, all right, so what I'm gonna do, you can follow along on here, is I'm gonna expand this window. And if you make it full screen, you'll get a better shot. All right, so what we're going to do is on the right-hand side over by the clock right down here, 90% of us will have the wireless icon if you're in the corporate world or you're hardwired, you're gonna see a square and that is your network. You're gonna right click it either way, whether it's wireless or wired, and you're gonna open network and internet settings. That's what we're trying to get done on here. When you go into this page, this is gonna be your network status page. We're gonna check your network adapter, see which one you're using. Are you using wireless? Are you using wired? Maybe you're using both, but we need to see which one is your primary. So you're going to click on change adapter options. And then you're gonna have the network connections window open up. When that opens up, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see which one you're connected to and which one isn't. As you can see for me, I don't have a Bluetooth connected and I don't have a network card added for a physical cable. So you're not gonna see that on mine. For you, if you are using wired, you're gonna see it like this with the green showing that that's your connection. Maybe you don't have wireless, you're gonna see one device. Whatever your device is, whatever the one that you know you're using, again, if you're wired, you wanna work on that one. For our example, I'm gonna work on the wireless, but it will work either way. I'm going to right click that and I'm going to go to properties. When I go to properties, I'm gonna get a list of things here in the internal Wi-Fi properties. I only care about the internet protocol version four. You're gonna Double click that. Now, don't click once because you're going to uncheck it and you don't want that. You're going to double click it and you're going to get a further deeper window. Now, if you are in the corporate world, it's already going to have information filled in for you and the IP address. 
and information already in there for your DNS. So I'm going to give you those examples. You're never going to touch the IP address. You're going to leave that alone. But for DNS, whether you have something in there or not, if you do, write it down on a piece of paper because we are going to play with it in a minute. If you do not have anything in there, just like I don't in here, you're going to select the radio button on here, and then you're going to add a few things in here. So let me show you if you did have something in there. You're going to see something like this, and then you're going to see a bunch of numbers. I'm going to make up some numbers here. Don't write these down. These are not the ones that are going to go in there. But maybe you're in the corporate world, and the primary one is your server or your router. Uh, you're probably going to have something like that. So in that case, you're only going to worry with the secondary, the alternate. Now, if you do not have anything in there and it's empty like this, then this is where we're going to add those alternates. So again, if you don't have anything in there, I would suggest to put these following numbers. And yes, you can add these in there. This is Google's public DNS. It's going to search the internet that way. Now, if you, so go ahead and add those in there right now if you like. And now I'm going to talk to the people that have something else in there, which is, again, your router, your server, whatever your IT company gave you. So in that scenario, whatever you have in the secondary is you're going to change it only don't touch the primary again this is only if you've got something in there already make your own alternate be the 8888 now once you're done with that you're going to hit okay and let me change it for me i'm going to put it how i want most of you to have it and then i'm going to hit okay and then you're going to hit okay one more time you don't need to restart your computer um so when i pull up a browser Let's open that guy up. Let me put it into the window that you guys are seeing right now. And you should be able to search anything. Golf clubs. And I'm not a golfer, but that was in my head right now. Uh, but you can see that the public DNS for Google is going to be a little faster than whatever your internet provider. If your internet provider is having issues, this will definitely help you have that. Now, let's talk about why it's a good idea to have public DNS and why it's not a good idea to have public DNS. So let me give you the pitfalls of that. So the pitfalls are Google's DNS is going to basically be the all in all. Everybody uses it. Everybody goes to Google and it's so big, but it's so many servers. And sometimes it does get overloaded because we have that now doesn't mean you can't use it. It's a nice thing to have as an alternate, as I showed you guys. But your internet provider might Mickey Mouse a few things on their side and set up, let's give you an example of AT&T. Maybe some of AT&T's pages are what we call hard-coded. A number is always going to be a certain name and vice versa. When that happens, Google might not be able to see that because it's a private network. So you having Google's DNS might not allow you to go into your provider's you know, main AT&T page, say, to pay your bill or something like that. Very small cases, that was the case. But if that is the case, it's probably a good idea to have two, to have your router in the first one with the 192 or whatever your IT company gives you. Um, and secondary, have 888. Your router is always going to talk to your ISP's master DNS. And then... Google is always going to be your alternate. So when your your provider has issues, the second one kicks in and vice versa. So it's always nice to have two choices, right? Um, that being said, yeah, if you have any problems or issues, you can always get a hold of us um, via our support page. I'm going to put the support page on the window here. And that is getting a hold of us directly submitting a ticket, we can help you out. You can also go to our webpage, anwsol.com, or call our phone number. We can always help you as well. Don't forget to also add us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Our tag is going to be ANWSOL. You're able to find us on there, and we can help you out. Okay, guys, I hope this was very helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions or issues, and get a hold of us. Submit a ticket if you like, and we can help you further. Otherwise, Watch this video, share it with your friends. Let us know if you enjoyed it. All right, I'll talk to you soon.